Today, we're covering the best Google Calendar tips every business owner needs to know. My name is Peter Moriarty, and for 20 years, I've been helping businesses systemize, organize, and scale using Google Workspace. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to get the most out of Google Calendar, including powerful tips for the newest updates, whether you're using the Google Calendar app on mobile or desktop, or if you're integrating with the Google Calendar API for advanced scheduling. Well, these tips and tricks will help you save time and run your business more effectively. And we'll also cover how to share your Google Calendar with others seamlessly, set up an appointment schedule, and use the latest auto recording and transcription features to automatically get better meetings recorded. If you're new to the channel, we help business owners all over the world get the most out of Google Workspace and other small business tools. Subscribe for more. Let's get started with the calendar app. Now, obviously we wanna schedule our calendar on the go so we can keep up to date with what's happening in our business. But most people unfortunately make a little bit of a mistake when they get started with Google Workspace. And that is that they connect to their Apple calendar or their Microsoft calendar on their devices and they don't actually use the Google Calendar app on iOS. Now, when you use the Apple app, it actually acts very differently to the Google app and you miss out on a bunch of features. So my recommendation is that you go to the App Store and actually download the correct Google Calendar app. You get access to more features like being able to see other people's schedules and every now and again, the Apple Calendar will run into synchronization issues. So it's not my recommendation to use it. There are some extra features in the Calendar app like week mode, and the ability to subscribe to other people's external calendars just work better in the Google app. So make sure you've got that as a starter. Next up, one of the best new features of calendar is the appointment schedule. Now you can set an appointment schedule on your calendar and open up booking slots to let clients or team members book a time with you without all of the back and forth emails. No one likes sending emails like ping pong back and forth saying, are you free Tuesday? Well, how about Wednesday? How about Thursday? And so this basically fixes that problem for you. Now in Google Calendar on the web, you can click a empty time slot on your calendar and choose to create a new appointment schedule. Now with an appointment schedule, you can settle the options like how much buffer time you want, you know, how long in advance people can book your time. And you can even integrate with some external solutions for payment integration if you wanna start charging people. And once you've got that set up and configured, it's just as simple as sending the booking link to anybody and they can go ahead and book into your calendar. You can even have different calendar event types, which give you different options for duration and different kinds of meetings that people can book on your calendar. Of course, if you're busy on either your primary calendar or one of the secondary or extra calendars that you've got in your Google Calendar, well, it's gonna block out that time and not allow any appointments there. So love this feature and it's a really great one. Now, if you're looking for more advanced features, like maybe round robins for sales teams, you can get multiple people set up to share a calendar and share a booking link inside the Google Calendar. But if you want more advanced features, you might look for some alternative solutions like Calendly or Schedule Once or even Acuity Scheduling. Now, what about sharing with your team? Well, with Google Workspace, by default, out of the box, your calendar will be shared in read-only mode with all of your colleagues. So that means your team, clients, anyone that you wanna share with, as long as they're inside your company and they have an email address, they'll get access to your calendar. If you wanna turn this off, you can navigate to the admin panel and in calendar settings, you can choose the default level of shared settings across your company. But if you wanna share a calendar with someone individually, maybe they're outside your company or it's your spouse and you wanna share what you're up to in your business calendar so they know what time they can organize events around your work, well, that's as simple as going back to your calendar, selecting the calendar that you wanna share, going to sharing settings, and adding that person's email address. Now, they're gonna need a Gmail account or a Google Workspace account to access your calendar, and you can choose the level of sharing that you wanna give that person. It's pretty self-explanatory from there. If someone wants to share a calendar with you, they need to do the same on their end. You should get an email notification letting you know a calendar has been shared with you. You can accept that calendar, and it will immediately appear on your calendar. Now, I like to use this feature to share my calendar with my PA who reads my emails and schedules events manually sometimes. It means that I've got someone else helping to manage the calendar events so I don't have to bother with it and calendar 
events just pop up on my calendar ready to go and I can accept them when I'm ready to. Next up, let's talk about an advanced feature and this has been released just recently. Well, Google Meet is a fantastic tool for holding meetings internally with your team and even externally as well with clients, suppliers or customers. Now you can record a meeting inside Google Meet and that can automatically place that recording inside your Google Drive. But you may not know that Google have recently released the ability to automatically schedule a meeting to be recorded in advance. And you actually do this via Google Calendar. Now, this is really useful if you have maybe a weekly team meeting or a daily huddle, and you always wanna record them to preserve what was said so you can refer back to it, or you wanna keep those meetings transcribed so you can use Gemini's AI tools to refer to them at a later date. We've been recording all of our meetings and transcribing them as well for years in our business. And it means that I can actually ask questions of Gemini and get information from something that was said in a meeting sometime a year ago, which is really cool, as well as aggregating data and insights from my business just from all of the conversations that our team have naturally had on meetings. Now, if you wanna set up a meeting to automatically record, after you've created a meeting on your calendar, you've shared that meeting with multiple people and a Google Meet has been created, you can go to the Meet settings by clicking the cog icon, and then you can go to the automatic recording settings. And my recommendation is to switch on the notes from Gemini, the transcription, and the recording as well for all of your recurring meetings inside your business. Now, if you want, you can always stop the recording once the meeting has started, but this is a pretty cool feature to make sure important business information is captured. Next up, if you're working with a team across multiple geographies, if you're working in multiple time zones, well, you can simplify global scheduling by setting up some key time zones right inside of your calendar. So to set up multiple time zones in Google Calendar, you can go into your settings and then time zone and then display secondary time zone. And you can choose a secondary time zone to appear right there on your calendar. You can give it a specific label if you want, like a country code or an airport code, so you have a good reference of what that time zone is. Now, if one additional time zone is not enough, you can actually enable the world clock, which will let you have a bunch of different time zones sitting in a widget inside your calendar. And that's also available in your settings. If you'd like some more tips on global remote team management, you can watch our video on Google Workspace for Remote Teams, where I share all of our tips from running a large company completely remotely for nearly 10 years now. Now we've covered all the basics of Calendar, let's get into the really advanced stuff, and that's leveraging the API. Now, Google has an API built which allows third-party integrations and developers to connect to the app read and write to the data inside of Calendar, and that opens up some amazing options for extra features and functionality in the Google world. You might be able to connect a third-party app that's gonna help you with scheduling or business management, or maybe setting additional reminders. And let's talk about some of the ways that you might take advantage of that. Now, the most obvious one is to connect with a CRM system or a customer relationship management system. That might be a tool that you're using for selling. It might be a tool for taking notes of customer meetings. It might be a tool for setting reminders for yourself. It might be something that you're doing to schedule and manage the delivery of jobs for your customers. Now, there are many tools out there on the market and integrating with your Google Calendar means that your executive and your management and your other meetings like talking to your accountant are all going to be recorded and you know hopefully won't create any conflict if you're involved in the delivery of your business as well and many small business owners are so that makes things simple to have everything in one place but what else can we do with this api well one of the things that i love about the api is considering that it's open you can connect it to other apps like zapier zapier opens the world for you to connect to many other third-party applications that can either read your calendar entries and maybe put them in a spreadsheet or if you have a booking form on your website that's custom built and you want to have that automatically add into your calendar certain calendar events, well, you could build that as well. Zapier is a tool that acts as a bit of a middleman and allows business data to flow in and out of cloud applications, and it allows you to integrate fully with Google Calendar. I'd love to know what apps are you integrating your Google Calendar with in the comments down below. Personally, now that Calendar works with automatic scheduling inside natively in the Google Calendar app, we don't have much of a need to connect Google Calendar to external apps. Although we do use Asana for our task and project management, and I subscribe to my Asana project tasks inside my Google Calendar, 
And I do love that feature. If you're interested in getting more value out of your calendar by integrating it with third-party apps, my recommendation would be that you check out the Google Apps Marketplace and look for calendar-based applications there to see if you can find some inspiration. I hope you've enjoyed my top tips for business owners on Google Calendar. If you'd like more insights, just leave a comment down below and let me know if you've got questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in an upcoming video. You can also join me live for a Q&A session by going to ask.itgenius.com and leaving your question there and I'll do my best to answer them in the next session. Now, if you'd like more detailed help with your Google Workspace, if you need your hand held with setting up or getting the most out of the platform, click the link down below this video to connect with our team.